Monique, do you ever read the Bible? I used to. What happened? I just stopped. For any reason? It's God's love letter to you. And why would you stop reading a love letter? I stopped reading it because... Monique, what's your thoughts on the afterlife? Well, I feel like there is an afterlife. I think we all go somewhere and... I don't know. I think I think there is. I think there is more than just here. After, it has to be something after. Do you think about it much? Yeah. Like, especially when you have a loved one that passed away, you ask yourself, like, where are they going? You know, would would you see them again? Would that be a place that you were going to go also? Tyron, what do you think? Yes, I think it is. Are you afraid of death? Yes. Boy, that's humble. Most guys say, no, when you die, you die, your number's up. But everyone's afraid of death. It's so unknown. It's the greatest mystery of life. People say, oh, you know, I don't know what happens after people die. What do you think of what the Bible says? It makes it very clear what happens. Do you ever read the Bible? Uh, not often, no. Monique, do you ever read the Bible? I used to. And what happened? I just stopped. For any reason? It's God's love letter to you. And why would you stop reading a love letter? I stopped reading it because there's more than one Bible. And to me, it's like, okay, you guys say that this person wrote this. How can I believe that this person wrote this? How can I say, how can I believe that it actually came from him? Yeah, that's a legitimate question a lot of people have. I mean, how do we know the Bible's the Word of God? Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Prophecy. That's how to know. The Bible's full of prophecy and only God knows the future. We can't even tell you what's going to happen in the weather tomorrow. You know, many a parade has been rained on because the weather forecasters got it wrong. But when Jesus spoke, and especially Matthew 24, Luke 21, he spoke history before it came into being. And so the Bible's filled with prophecy, and that shows the fingerprint of God all over it. Do you believe in God's existence? Yes. Tyrone, do you believe in God? Yes. Do you think God is happy with you or angry at you? Oh, happy. So you're a good person? Oh, yes. I'm a very giving person. I'm a very giving person. Yeah. Are you a good person? Oh, yes. Now, by what standard are you good? Because everybody thinks they're good. I could ask someone who's just robbed a bank and raped a woman. You think you're a good person? You say, yeah, I'm really good. You know, she deserved it and I needed the money. So, by what standard are you judging yourself as being a good person? I'm just an all-around good person. Like, I give. Um, I'm a helpful person. I'm always an ear you know, for anyone, and that's, I just feel like I'm a good person. You think the same? Oh, yes. Okay, can you handle me being a little prosecutor for a minute and asking some questions about it? Can you be honest with me? Yes. How many lies have you told in your life? Oh, I told a lot. <laughs> and what about you? I mean, yeah. <laughs> we all <ain't> lied. <laughs> have you ever stolen something in your whole life? Yeah, I have. When I was younger. Have you ever used God's name in vain? I have. And what about you? Yes. Would you use your mother's name as a cuss word? No. <laughs> of course not. <laughs> would you? No. Because that would be disrespectful, dishonoring to take her name instead of using a filth word beginning with S to substitute her name in the place of that word. And yet that's what you've done with God's name. His holy name. The godly Jews won't even speak or write down because it's so holy, but you substitute it as that filth word. It's called blasphemy. So serious, it's punishable by death in the Old Testament. Appreciate your honesty and your patience with me. Jesus said, if you look at a woman and lust for her, you commit adultery with her in your heart. Have you ever looked at a woman with lust? Yes. Have you looked with lust? Yes. So guys, I'm not judging you. This is for you to judge yourself. You've both told me that you're lying, thieving, blasphemous, <laughs> adulterers at heart. And you've got to face God on Judgment Day. <laughs> right. <laughs> so if he judges you by the Ten Commandments, we've looked at four of them, are you going to be innocent or guilty? I'm going to be guilty. Heaven or hell? I don't think I did nothing too bad to go to hell. <laughs> well, not by your standards. Remember, the Bible says all liars will have their part in the lake of fire. No thief, no blasphemer, no adulterer will inherit the kingdom of God. So can you see you're in big trouble? 
I, I can say I'm in big trouble. I mean, I have been, I still don't do the things that I have done. So I have been working on it because I see that that's things that you're not supposed to do. Okay, now let's take that to a court of law and you say, Judge, I did rob the bank and I shot the guard. It was very serious, but I want to tell you, I've been working on it since then. He says, so you should. <laughs> you're going to jail. So cleaning up your life in the face of your sins isn't going to get rid of them. And what about you? Are you going to be guilty on Judgment Day? No. Why not? Because I know I have a good heart, and um, I know I, ha I got a background. I know I did wrong in the past, and um, I, have, I ask God for uh, forgiveness. Okay, and now let's take that to a court of law. If you say, Judge, I did rob a bank, I shot a guard, but it was in the past. Even if you said, Judge, I'm really sorry and I'll never do this again, he's saying, you're still going to jail, buddy. You should be sorry, and of course you shouldn't do it again. Repentance is where you say, I'm sorry, I won't do it again. So in man's courtroom, saying, I'm sorry, I won't do it again, and it was in the past, won't get you out of the courtroom, and it won't happen on Judgment Day. You need something else. Do you know what you need? No. Monique, do you know what you need? I guess not, no. Well, if you're in court, and all the evidence is in, you're guilty, you know what you do? You throw yourself on the mercy of the judge. And the Bible says God is rich in mercy to all that call upon him. Mm -hmm. You and I broke the Ten Commandments, we broke God's law, and Jesus paid the fine. God made provision for our forgiveness through the suffering death of the Savior on the cross. Do you remember his last words? No. He said, it is finished just before he died. That's a weird thing to say just when you're dying. It is finished. But he was saying the debt has been paid. We broke God's law. Jesus paid the fine. Guys, if you're in court and someone pays your fine, a judge can legally let you go. You can say, Monique and Tyron, there's a stack of speeding fines here. This is deadly serious, but someone's paid them. You're out of here. And he can do that, which is legal. Even though you're guilty, you walk because someone else paid your fine. And even though you and I are guilty of many crimes against God, he can take the death sentence off us and let us live forever all mm -hmm. because of what Jesus did on the cross. Is this making sense? Yes, I think, yes. Is it making sense to you? Yes. And then Jesus rose from the dead. The Bible says it was not possible that death could hold him. And if you'll simply repent and trust alone in Jesus, you have a promise from God and he cannot lie, it's impossible for God to lie, you can trust him, that you'll pass from death to life, he'll remit your sins, forgive you, make you a new person in Christ, and cause you to desire that which is right rather than that which is wrong. And then when you read the Bible, you will know it's God's word. He opens the eyes of your understanding, the Holy Spirit leads you into all truth. So, let me summarize as we close and say, Tyron and Monique, you're like a man on the edge of a plane 10,000 feet up, doesn't have a parachute, he knows he has to jump, but this is his plan. He's going to flap his arms, he's going to try and save himself. And I say, hey, don't do that, trust the parachute. So don't trust your goodness to save you on Judgment Day, you don't have any, you're like the rest of us, you have a multitude of sins, simply transfer your trust from yourself to the Savior. And the second you do that, you are saved from wrath. You're saved because of God's amazing grace, and you'll have assurance that you have everlasting life, and death is no longer a mystery to you. Making sense? Yeah. So if you were to die today, and God gave you justice, you'd end up in hell. That horrifies me. There are two things you must do to be saved. You must repent and trust alone in Jesus. When are you gonna do that? I mean, immediately, I've already started. And what about you? Same here, I already started. Can I pray for you? Sure. Father, I, I pray for Tyrone and, and Monique. This day, may they truly repent of all sin, and may they trust in you and in your mercy and understand the cross. And may you make them brand new people today. May they be born again and pass from death to life because of your amazing grace. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. The Evidence Bible is a reservoir overflowing with everything evangelistic. I couldn't recommend it more highly. It's what you need to defend and share your faith. Franklin Graham said, 
In a day when Christians are too often silenced by the questions of skeptics, the Evidence Bible will help you be prepared to give an answer. Also commended by Christian leaders such as Josh McDowell, D. James Kennedy, Tim LaHaye, Norman Geisler, and Ken Ham. This study Bible comes in soft as well as hard cover. As Kirk said, it's everything you've ever wanted to know about apologetics and reaching the lost, including 200 of the most commonly asked questions of the Christian faith. It will arm you with practical training on evolution, atheism, the teachings of Mormons, Hindus, Muslims, and Jehovah's Witnesses, and much more. including how to effectively, lovingly, and logically share the truth of the gospel. You'll find that it's hundreds of inspiring quotes from the famous, and its practical tips on defending the faith will be a great encouragement. Go to livingwaters.com, click on Store, Books, and then the Evidence Study Bible.